You're watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. News 25 is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Voted best of Harump for four years. Give them a call, 775-727-9900. News 25 is also brought to you by Gunny's Air Conditioning and Heating. New, service, and repair. Call Gunny's, 775-727-6800. Hello and welcome to this edition of News 25. I'm Yunette Gentry. It's Tuesday, May 9th. In our top story, an update now on the Cathedral Canyon murder trial. Two Nye County officers testify regarding Brad Mean's arrest and all of the evidence they found. On August 4th, the trial continued for the murder of 27-year-old Roy Jaggers on August 1st, 2021. Brought to the witness stand to testify was Patrol Lieutenant James McRae from the Nye County Sheriff's Office, who made contact and arrested Brad Main. McRae stated that upon arrival, he met up with the Nye County Sheriff's Office, Captain Barukowitz, and Brad Main, who was placed under arrest at the time under suspicion of being involved with the death of Roy Jaggers. Afterwards, Lieutenant McRae and another officer went to acquire the alleged murder weapon, which was caught on body cam. After defense attorney Tom Gibson's cross-examination, another officer took to the witness stand, Detective Sergeant Corey Fowles, who is responsible for obtaining the evidence in the case against Brad Main. Sergeant Fowles recalled answering a call in response to a homicide investigation at Cathedral Canyon. Photo evidence of Roy Jagger's corpse was presented and then confirmed by Sergeant and fouls. He then recalled speaking to Jagger's parents and neighbors. Due to the contents of that interaction, Heather Pate and Kevin Dent, two who pleaded guilty for the murder of Jagger's, were arrested. While searching Dent's vehicle, Sergeant Fowles discovered Roy's clothes, Roy's wallet, which the contents were shredded but put back together, the handcuffs and orange tie-down strap allegedly used to restrain Roy, a towel, and a tarp soiled with blood. Sergeant Fowles was then made aware of Brad Main by his supervisor and began investigating them. After searching Brad's house, they collected the alleged murder weapon, being a pump-action shotgun, which was presented to the court and confirmed by Fowles. Afterwards, Sergeant Fowles went to the shooting range, where Roy was allegedly tortured with Main. Upon arrival, they found a pack of cigarettes that Maine allegedly confirmed to be his and the knife Maine allegedly used on Jagger's anal cavity. Afterwards, Maine was detained and taken to Nye County Detention Center. During transport, Maine spoke of the blowtorch that was allegedly used on Roy. The conversation was caught on Sergeant Fowles' body cam. What about the blowtorch? True. I was wondering about that. Afterwards, Sergeant Fowles contacted Norman Mullet, who had previously testified, and based on the conversation that was had, he then went to Mullet's house and discovered the box of what Fowles describes as torture tools. Photos of the tools were then presented to the court and confirmed by Sergeant Fowles. Evidence of the belt Maine allegedly used to whip Jaggers was then presented and confirmed by Sergeant Fowles as well. Sergeant Fowles then searched Maine's truck where he discovered a Glock in the center console, the one Maine allegedly shot around Jaggers' head. The Glock was then presented and Sergeant Fowles confirmed that it was the Glock he retrieved. Stay tuned to learn more about this ongoing trial. In more Southern Nevada news, a man is arrested after shooting inside a school zone Monday. A man by the name of Jesse Rios was arrested today in regard to the Tobol Middle School shooting that happened yesterday afternoon in Las Vegas. 
KPVM spoke a little bit about this incident yesterday on the desk. At Tobo Middle School yesterday at about 1 p.m., the school was set into hard lockdown for allegedly around 30 minutes. During the lockdown, an adult was transported to UMC after being struck by an alleged stray bullet. The investigation revealed that the shooting allegedly took place a few blocks away instead of on the school property. Rios is now facing charges of battery with a deadly weapon, 15 counts of firing a firearm at a prohibited area, 4 counts of firing a gun into an occupied structure, and 4 counts of attempted murder. This investigation is still ongoing, but Rios was transported and booked into the Clark County Detention Center today. Well, if you're looking to get moving while serving those who serve us, you're in luck because the 13th annual VA2K Walk and Roll event is back with goals of moving the body in support of your whole health and well-being, while also helping homeless veterans. This event is scheduled for Wednesday, May 17th at the North Las Vegas VA Medical Center starting at 9 a.m. and festivities will continue until 1 p.m. The community is invited to participate in the VA2K event, which includes a short two-kilometer walk. The event is free, and it's suggested that participants be in front of the education building 15 minutes prior to the start of that event. Donations will be collected and distributed to homeless veterans in Southern Nevada, although donations are not required in order for you to participate. You can find out more about the VA2K Whole Health and Moving the Body event by looking it up online. And we'll be right back here at News 25 with much more local and national news. You're watching News 25, local coverage you can count on. Welcome back to News 25. Well, Linda Wright of the Pahrump Holiday Task Force is telling us about their early events that they organize, and there are about four different events per year that they plan. Hi, I'm Linda Wright with the Pahrump Holiday Task Force, and I just want to let you know that we do four events during the year. And the first one is Easter in the Park and at Petrick Park, and we co-sponsor co that with PDOP, Pahrump Disabilities Outreach. And that's a fun event for the whole family. And the second one is Fourth of July week, Fourth uh, of July, and that is at the Calvada Eye, and that starts out with the 4th of July Parade, and then goes into a family fun event uh, with a barbecue in the Eye. And the third one is a sit-down dinner at the Coalition for Thanksgiving. And the th a fourth one is a sit-down dinner at the Coalition on Christmas Eve. So won't you come out and enjoy all the fun and festivities and all the community fun. Thank you and have a great day. And starting tomorrow, Wednesday, May 10th, Live Nation is bringing you Concert Week. That promotion is good for many upcoming concerts in Las Vegas. Concert Week starts on Tuesday and it ends on that following Tuesday, the 16th next week. Now here's all of that info. Live Nation's Concert Week All-In Tickets, including all fees up front in the $25 cost, kicks off tomorrow, May 10th, and runs till May 16th, 2023. More than 50 concerts in Las Vegas are part of this promotion, such as Maroon 5, LL Cool J, Keith Urban, Miranda Lambert, Duran Duran, Nickelback, Billy Idol, David Spade and Nikki Glaser. Rod Stewart, Peter Frampton, Elvis Costello, and much, much more. Fans can filter their search on LiveNation.com slash Concert Week by participating events, venues, or artists. While on the website, fans can also set the location to the closest city, and the site will refresh to only include participating shows nearby. All right, if you're looking for that event, again, it starts tomorrow and ends next Tuesday.
Now here's Rory Rossell with us to talk about an upcoming festival that's happening this Sunday for Mother's Day, and it's in Henderson. Come out and support our local and regional artists during the City of Henderson's two-day art festival returning to Water Street on Saturday, May 13th throughout Sunday, May 14th from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. daily. A Mother's Day weekend tradition, the annual art festival of Henderson brings thousands of Henderson residents and visitors to pursue nearly 100 artists and booths with vendors along Water Street. The art festival featuring innovative and modern artists showcasing exquisite crafts, fashion, home decor from metal and photography to jewelry and sculptures. Along with daily entertainment, the festival goers can experience a live art performances such as glass blowing and chalk art gallery and take a self-guided tour on the many Water Street murals. New to the art festival this year is Art on Army, a pop-up art experience hosted by the city's Light Art Gallery. For those 21 and older, the Bubbles and Beer Patio on Water Street Plaza will feature beer, wine, and a Pino Palette painting experience. Food vendors and a live entertainment stage will also be located on Water Street. The art festival will be held at 240 South Water Street in Henderson. For additional information and a full schedule of activities, you can visit thecityofhenderson.com. All right, stick around for much more news from all across Southern Nevada because your sports report and weather is up next. You're watching News 25. Local coverage you can count on. News 25 is brought to you by Mountain West Lawyers, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. Welcome back. Well, now here's Mikey Ruhan telling us all about the scores, slam dunks, and blocked shots in sports. Time now for your News 25 look at sports. Stanley Cup playoffs, Golden Knights. They lost a tough one on Saturday on home ice. Score was 5-1. to one. But last night in Edmonton in the first period, Marsha Schultz, he scores his first one. Marsha Schultz looks to center. It comes to Eichel. He tried to sweep it towards the net. It's out in front. Marsha Schultz a try. Score! The answer by Vegas. He's got more in the tank. Here comes his second one. Eichel with a toe drag. Eichel out in front. Score! Eichel the playmaker. Marcheseau does it again. On to the second period with a 2-1 lead. Zach Whitecloud makes it 3-1. Ali Smith on the move. Hands to Whitecloud with some room. Moves in. Shoots. Score! Zach Whitecloud picks the corner. And Marcia Schultz, he almost scores a hat trick right here. He's denied by this beautiful save by Skinner. Barbashev moves in. Barbashev to Marchessault. Save made by Skinner. Tied, kick the left pad out. Marchessault almost with a hat trick goal. Eichel makes it 4 to 1 in the second period. By Vegas. Set a ball down by Bouchard, allowing Eichel an entry. Eichel shoots and scores. 4 1 Vegas. Golden Knights go on to a 5 to 1 victory, taking a 2 to 1 series lead. Game four tomorrow night in Edmonton. Can't wait. Seven o'clock. Las Vegas Aviators, they closed out a road trip in Sacramento with a 2-1 victory over the River Cats. They return home tonight, taking on the Albuquerque Isotopes at seven o'clock. Prump Valley High School Trojans baseball team, they're in Overton today against the Moapa Valley baseball team. And the softball team is in Mesquite facing the Virgin Valley High School. We'll keep you posted on those games. And that's your look at sports on News 25. In today's health news, there are all kinds of skincare products available these days, with some focusing on being quote unquote natural. While you might think those are better for your skin, a study finds that they often contain allergens. Contact dermatitis is a really common issue for people, and they develop a really itchy rash. It could be scaly, it could be dry, sometimes blistery um, that occurs when we actually come in contact with something that our skin is allergic to. 
According to the study, researchers analyzed more than 1,600 so-called natural personal care products and discovered most of them contained ingredients that can cause allergic contact dermatitis. Cleveland Clinic's Dr. Sandra Hung, who did not take part in the study, says products that have fragrances can be a big culprit. She recommends people who have very sensitive skin avoid those and use products labeled fragrance-free or hypoallergenic instead. If you have been using a product that's been causing contact dermatitis, she says make sure to stop immediately, then give it a couple of weeks to see if your skin improves. If it doesn't go away, that would be the time that you would really want to see your doctor uh, to determine if there's something that you can use to treat it or to help you figure out what the cause is. Sometimes patients need to go through patch testing uh, to determine the actual cause of their reaction. While it is important for everyone to wear sun protection every day, medical experts say it's important to note that the FDA does not approve skincare products before they hit the shelves. So be sure to look at those ingredients before you buy. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Lerner and Rowe Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. Let's take a live look outside through our Lerner and Row weather cam. It's a beautiful day, but things are heating up out there. We've got scattered clouds, a bit of breezes. We'll take a closer look in our weather during the break. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Hi, good evening, Nevada. This is John Kohler from the KPVM Channel 25 Weather Studios and worldwide on the local BTV app. The app you should get on your phone. It's essential. You should get that. I'm not kidding. All right, Fernley, 64 degrees, 65 out there in Fallon, Carson City, 62 degrees. It's kind of the northern banana belt continues down to Tonopah at 63 and 65 in Goldfield. They're breaking out from the pack. Oh, look at beautiful Beatty, 76 degrees. How wonderful for you. Amargosa, you hit 82 along with Las Vegas. However, you didn't get the uh, over-under, did you? No, Las Vegas tonight with a uh, heading into a low tonight of 59 degrees. A very nice day in Las Vegas. Out in Death Valley, it's 93. And here in the Paradise of Rump, well, let's take a look. Current temperature is 78. It was 80 just a little bit earlier. So, uh, southerly winds to just 11 miles per hour. Pretty pleasant on this mostly cloudy day. The sun rose this morning at 542 a.m., Setting this evening, look for it about 7.38, and we'll head for a low tonight of 52 degrees. Super pleasant, uh, cloudy skies make a wonderful sunset. And what about the rest of the week? Well, let's whisper to ourselves the possibilities of three days of sunshine. Hey, it's like you won something. Look at that. Temperatures coming out of the high 70s, ending up at 90 degrees on Friday. And it doesn't really back off that much on Saturday, Sunday, despite the addition of some clouds to our forecast. Looks like we've got an 85% chance of Total sunshine on many, just 15% of us are going to get wet. Uh, but other than that, it looks like a really nice stretch of weather here, about 89, 90 degrees, moderate winds. How can you go wrong? Make some plans for the weekend, all right? Back to the desk, here's Dr. Yunette Gentry. Thanks so much, John, for always giving us those up-to-the-minute accurate forecasts. And we see those temperatures creeping up, but we can handle it. We know summer is right around the corner. Well, that does it for this edition of News 25. I'm Yunette Gentry, and from all of us here at KPVM and Ace Country Radio, thanks for joining us, and we'll see you on the air next newscast. Good night.